Welcome back to Press Review In Depth and a very happy Easter holiday. Now let's get the latest from the press about the Middle East. Robert Fisk writes in The Independent, the Middle East we must confront in the future will be a mafia star ruled by money. He writes that Saudi Arabia has made a $3 billion donation to Pakistan, which has agreed to supply Saudi Arabia with an arsenal of anti-aircraft and anti-tank missiles, which will be passed on despite the usual end-user certificates claiming these weapons will be used only on Saudi soil to the Salafist rebels in Syria. He adds the Americans, in other words, will no longer use their rat run of weapons from Libya to the Syrian insurgents because they no longer see it as in their interest to change the Assad government. Fisk adds, we're so caught up in battlefield losses and war crimes and sarin and barrel bombs that we lose sight of the fact that the Syrian bloodbath, much like the Lebanese bloodbath of 1976 to 1990, is underwritten by vast amounts of cash from foreign donors. Speaking of Egypt, he says the army's re-establishment of its massive financial benefits, shopping malls, real estates and banking, which bring in billions of dollars for the country's military elite and whose business dealings are now constitutionally safe from the prying eyes of any democratically elected Egyptian government. And an article in the Washington Post says young people led Egypt's revolution, but the old guard still rules. The author Erin Cunningham writes about General Sisi, the former military commander, boasts strong support from many in Egypt's older generation, who view his willingness to violently confront the Islamist opposition as a continuation of the security-led policies favoured by Egyptian leaders since army officers seized power in 1952. She adds Sisi also faces a growing block of young people embittered by the repressive political climate, as students and activists are imprisoned and the economy sputters. Commenting on the age gap in Egyptian politics, she writes more than half of Egyptians are younger than 25 and their ranks are growing faster than the rest of the population. The government, meanwhile, is dominated by ageing political veterans. The youngest member of the cabinet is the youth minister, 55-year-old Khaled Abdelaziz. She adds, with the help of Egyptian media, the government has portrayed youth activists such as Ahmed Mahir, leader of the April 6th youth movement, which played a key role in the 2011 uprisings, as foreign paid saboteurs intent on leading Egypt into anarchy and chaos. For more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.